In September, London gets its first ever large-scale international mural festival, the London Mural Festival. I believe this entire event is nothing more than a gentrification project that will exploit lower-income multicultural communities across the city whilst allowing the advertising agency Global Street Art to expand into new territory. We've got a lot to unpack on this one. My name's Doug. You're watching Fifth Wall TV. First and foremost, before we get into it, the views expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. They do not reflect the views or opinions of my clients, employers, anyone associated with me or Fifth Wall TV. This is not a personal attack on anyone involved in this project, not the artists or the organizers. I'm making this video today because I know this model. I've watched this company for 10 years. I am sick and tired of watching art being used as a Trojan horse for exploitations. And I would like to use this video as a jump off point for the discussion to critically assess the impact it will have in the city. Nothing more. I believe it was the tail end of 2019 when I first heard about the London Mural Festival. Naturally, I was very excited and curious to see what lay in store. Earlier this year, we had the first wave of artist announcements. 10 artists announced, nine of them male, one of them female, every single one of them white. Nice. From this announcement, it was made quite abundantly clear that this was a festival based on aesthetics. In no way disrespect to any of the artists involved, of which there is plenty of talent in that roster, this was quite clearly going to be a festival based around the idea of beautification rather than something else. That's a curatorial decision, fine. The follow-up from this is when you're talking about communities like Hackney, Tower Hamlets, Walthamstow, Canning Town, these are some of the most multicultural communities in the entire world. And there's a sensitivity that comes with this when you're imposing your work and your vision of their community upon them. So really it comes down to one vital question you have to ask yourself. Will this artwork benefit or reflect the community that it will exist in? Since the original lineup announcement, uh, they've changed things around a little bit. Ben Ayn has been quietly cut out of the picture. They've rammed in a few more females. In total, they are saying they're expecting 50 plus artists uh, to be painting. So I can't really comment too much further, but as it stands at the time of recording, it is whiter than a Trump rally out there. The festival itself is being run by the advertising agency Global Street Art. In order to get an idea of what might lie in store for the communities after the festival, it makes sense to just look at the model that they've applied over the last decade in London. Global Street Art are a response to a world built on data and numbers. They are an entity that constantly needs to be fed. It doesn't matter what's going inside it, its entire survival is dependent on the consumption of content. They constructed a pretty effective model by organising walls in London. So if you were an artist coming into town, you would contact them, they would sort you a wall, some paint, you would be able to go paint your picture, get your photo for Instagram and leave without having to speak to a single local. After seeing how effective this was, they just began sourcing more and more walls or hoardings or scraps or whatever they could get their hands on because Walls meant content and content meant followers and followers means power. Once the following had hit a suitable number, whatever that might have been, we started to see a real change in their direction. No longer was street art the primary focus, the walls themselves became really prime real estate to introduce hand-painted adverts. The problem with this is they've now got all the walls in Shoreditch. They need to expand to grow, and in order to do that, they need to find some new territory. If I was a businessman, I would say a good way of expanding into new territory would be to pitch for taxpayer money, I would brand up as a festival, I would invite as many artists as I possibly could to go into as many new communities as I possibly could to maximise my reach. When the dust had settled on that project, I would begin implementing adverts. If you're sitting there thinking, who cares, it's just a bit of paint, I'll tell you who cares. Estate agents. Estate agents know the power that this art has. It doesn't matter if it's an advert or not, it alludes to the sense of a creative class, a creative culture in the area, and this turns a neglected or seemingly run-down neighbourhood into an up-and-comer. And this turns your rent from 300 to 500, from 500 to 1,000. So, 
Will this art benefit or reflect the community it will exist in? You tell me. Back in May, after the murder of George Floyd, the global black community stood up once again and demanded change. And we stood with them. In solidarity, we all posted our We Black Square and we listened. We promised that things would change, that this would be a different world. We do not walk about this planet unnoticed. Every single decision we make or step we take <laughs> has an impact. I was going to break into song there. Whether it's the coffee we drink, the clothes we wear, or the neighbourhood we decide to live in. And some of us have more options and choices on these matters. And with that, we have a greater responsibility to ensure that the impact that we leave behind is a positive one. With every inch of me, I love London. And right now, we need art more than ever. A sense of normality, some hope to cling on to. I'm not doing this because I'm trying to deny a city some creativity. I'm not doing it because I want to watch the festival crumble. I'm doing it because I've watched this. I've watched this model play out and grow over the last 10 years and I know the formula. And I just think that this city deserves better than that. If I've completely missed the mark on this, then I'll be the first person to hold my hands up, apologize and say, you guys did good. But as it stands, I'm not so sure. Let me know if you have any comments or thoughts and let's continue this conversation. Till then, my name's Doug. This was Fifth Wall TV.